The U.S. now realizes it faces an incarceration crisis. Once seen as a marginal issue, Americans of all stripes are now raising concerns about our country's inclination toward punishment that drives overcriminalization and mass incarceration. Pressure by impacted communities and advocates has emboldened elected officials and candidates to question public policies that lead to excessive incarceration. Since the early 2000s, states and more recently the federal government have made policy choices that have safely reduced their prison populations. Reformers have set a goal to cut incarceration in half, and calls for prison abolition coming from directly impacted communities are gaining acceptance. However, most reforms have been limited to nonviolent offenses. But we will lose the modest progress made and fail to end mass incarceration if we cling to long prison terms and the outmoded approach to serious and violent crime they represent. To understand why, let's look at what makes the U.S. prison population so large. The size of any population is a function of how many people enter and leave it in a given year. This is true of a planet, a hospital, and even the number of people in prison. Each year, some number of people enter our nation's prison system. Experts refer to this number as admissions. Policy decisions such as laws that criminalize drugs or lock someone up for stealing a cell phone result in increased admissions and grow the prison population. Policies that reduce or eliminate the reliance on incarceration, like laws that legalize drugs or that prohibit sending a person to prison for failing to pay fines and court fees, reduce admissions and lead to a reduction of the prison population. Each year, at the same time as some number of people enter the prison system, some number of people exit. Every person who enters prison remains there for a period of time required by their sentence and other considerations. Experts refer to this as length of stay. Policy decisions that require people to spend more time in prison, mandatory minimum, three strikes, and life without parole sentences, reduce the number of exits and increase the prison population. At any given time, the prison population includes a mix of individuals admitted for a range of offenses and with various associated lengths of stay. Although it is easy to grasp how the number of admissions might impact the prison population, the significant impact length of stay has is less apparent. To simplify, let's imagine length of stay in terms of its impact on the speed at which three different groups exit prison. Under current trends and policies, each year roughly 55% of prison admissions are for low-level offenses, 39% are for more serious crimes, and only 6% are for very serious and violent crimes. People from these three groups exit prison at different speeds because of the lengths of stay associated with them by sentencing and release policies. Our first group includes people in prison for terms of fewer than three years, generally for drug and property offenses. It also typically includes people entering for technical violations of community supervision. Our second group includes people serving prison terms of three to 10 years, generally for more serious crimes, like assault and robbery. And our third group includes people who serve 10 or more years in prison, mostly for repeat offenses or for very serious crimes involving violence. Although every year a smaller number of people enter for serious and violent crime, over time their numbers stack up because they move out of the population more slowly. This stacking effect explains how it can be simultaneously true that while fewer people enter prison each year for serious and violent crime, the majority of people in prison are there for such crimes. Although every year the majority of people who enter prison do so for nonviolent offenses, more than half of the prison population is composed of people convicted of a violent offense. This is a result of harsh sentencing policies and extremely restrictive release policies that lead to a longer length of stay. This explains why we will fail to end mass incarceration without confronting our reliance on long prison terms that gained favor in the get tough 1980s and 90s and have since gotten longer and harsher driving America's prison population to its peak in 2009 and keeping it large today. In addition to swelling the prison population, long prison terms are disproportionately imposed on people of color and have resulted in a rapidly growing number of elderly people in prison. 
The experience of the state of Alabama illustrates how focusing solely on sending fewer people to prison and reducing the amount of time they must remain there for less serious offenses is not enough to reduce mass incarceration. In recent years, the state has reduced the number of people serving shorter prison terms. But while the share of its prison population serving shorter terms has dropped, the share serving long terms has steadily climbed. Those serving long prison terms in Alabama have canceled out the benefits of reforms that have reduced admissions. Yes, policymakers from both sides of the aisle have begun to acknowledge that the nation's over-reliance on incarceration is a costly and critical issue. Reducing incarceration should not stop at reforms related to less serious offenses. Ignoring long prison terms threatens to undermine the criminal justice reform successes of the last decade. Ending mass incarceration will require addressing the stacking effect of long prison terms, which calls for an ambitious effort to change how our country responds to violence and how we treat people who commit serious crime.